officials. He meets with them. It's possible he can buy time. That's about okay. all he can do. All right, Chuck, thank you so much. We can't wait to see you this Sunday on Meet yeah. the Press. A lot more to talk about than you originally planned, but we also know that presidential candidate Hillary Clinton and Carly Fiorina will join you, so we appreciate you joining us. Uh, let me bring in Republican Congressman Luke Messer of Indiana. He's the chairman of the Republican Policy Committee and the fifth-ranking member of the House Republican leadership. Congressman, thank you so very much for your time. Yeah, sure. Glad to be here. Let me get your gut reaction, not the one that you've been able to process now, but when you originally heard the news early this morning that Speaker Boehner was in fact resigning. You know, just the first reaction was wow. But, you know, as you think about it a little longer, I think today the American people are seeing why agree or disagree with John Boehner. His colleagues all love him. He's a good man, somebody that has always tried to put his country and the institution of the House first. And clearly he did that today. But it's clear all of his colleagues don't love him. There was a resolution introduced in July to remove him as Speaker. If you're speaking as in love as a respectable man, that's one part of the conversation, but as a legislator, as a leader of that party, um, it's clear that there were more than a few who were unhappy with him. Well, sure. I mean, uh, what, what, there are folks who disagree with John, even if uh, folks think, see him as a good man. You know, the bottom line where we are today is John Boehner has given us an opportunity to come to together. You know, we may have a new speaker, but you're still going to have President Obama in office. You're still going to have a significant minority uh, of, of Democrats that, that, that have uh, power in the Senate. And we have to stand together as a, a caucus. Wherever you come down on many of these issues and plans moving forward, our only opportunity to make a difference as a conservative caucus is if we do it together. But let me ask you, for example, if Kevin McCarthy does become the new speaker, what changes? Well, I mean, uh, some of it is we've all seen in life in other places. Uh, often leaders end up leaving their job, and it's not fair that they, they have to be put out. Some of it's some circumstances beyond their control. I think this all gives us a fresh start. It gives us an opportunity to try to reach out across our caucus, come to consensus, and stand together as conservatives. But again, do you believe, let me ask you this, do you believe that Kevin McCarthy will be the next speaker? Well, Kevin's certainly in a very strong spot. He's done a great job as majority leader. He's got a lot of strong relationships. I think we all, as members, have a responsibility to listen now, listen to our colleagues, see who steps forward. But Kevin's in a very Does strong spot. Does he have your support? I, Kevin will have my support. So with that said, if others fall in, in line, and not meaning in the sense of sheep, but fall in line and support um, someone who's already an established leader, when you look at his record versus Speaker Boehner, some of the very same decisions are likely to play out. As you know, the math, the number of conservatives within your party does not increase their power. So when you hear the title of basically those who will be the disruptors of your party, again, I ask, what changes? Well, I don't think this is a time for any touchdown dances, and I frankly don't think it's time for our colleagues that are frustrated with some of that to, to be pointing fingers either. We are what we are. We're the Republican majority in the House. We have a majority in the Senate, but we don't have a supermajority there that can overcome a filibuster. We've got to come together on principles where we agree and stand up to this president and, and, and to the Senate minority leadership and Harry Reid. And our only real ability to do that is going to be to do it together. It's not an easy job. John Boehner had one of the hardest jobs in Washington. Whoever is our next speaker is going to continue to have a hard job, but we do have an opportunity for a fresh start. Congressman, thank you so much for your time. We greatly appreciate Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, news of John Boehner's resignation was loudly cheered at the Values Voter Summit in Washington, D.C. this morning. Thousands of social conservatives erupted into applause when Senator Marco Rubio broke from his prepared remarks to deliver the news. You hear them standing and cheering there. Speaker Boehner, um, that news came from Rubio. Uh, I came from as well as uh, strong comments from Ted Cruz, who has been, of course, one of the most vocal critics of Speaker Boehner. Yesterday, John Boehner was Speaker of the House. You all come to town and somehow that changes. My only request is can you come more often? Let me bring in Washington Post political columnist Daniel Milbank and Republican 
assistant former White House political director for George W. Bush, Matt Schlapp. Matt, let me start with you. Let's process what we witnessed there. A very happy Ted Cruz and that crowd.